Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. So it's Holy Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. We're in Holy Week and we are um, slowly approaching the climax of Holy Week, okay? which is really a, a long climax, a, a long uh, well, connected uh, series of events that um, highlight both our redemption and the hope of our uh, resurrection with Christ uh, in Easter. Uh, oh, God bless you, Eva. Now, um, if you if you uh, recall the past few days, the the gospels of the past few days had to do with the narrations, the different versions of the narrations of the Last Supper of our Lord. Today, we're going to read the same thing. It's still about the Last Supper. Tomorrow, of course, more about the Last Supper. Okay? So that tells you that the Last Supper of our Lord with His disciples really is a very, very important event for it to merit four days, five days of consideration in um, the daily masses that we uh, have been celebrating this week of Holy Week. Okay? Uh, we have been taking narrations of different parts of it and from different uh, authors of the gospel. So today we're going to uh, consider today's mass uh, picks up the narration of St. Matthew. Chapter 26, verses 14 to 25. So we will just read the, uh, the part that we are going to comment on. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely uh, it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man goes, the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Very strong words of our Lord, right? It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. It would have been better for that man not to even have been born. Very strong, very strong. I, I can't imagine. Uh, you know, our Lord called the Pharisees brood of vipers. Our Lord called Herod a fox. Our Lord called uh, the Jews uh, uh, hard-headed, stubborn people, etc. He, he, he called people several things. He, called, he, he told uh, Peter, get behind me, Satan. He equated Peter's uh, behavior to, to a satanic temptation. But I don't think anything can be stronger than to have 
said, it will be better for that man who will betray me not to even be born. Be born. It's just, <laughs> the world would have been better without a man like that, right? Who dared to betray the Son of God. So that's a very, very strong uh, uh, reproach. And the gall of, of uh, Judas, right? To deny, see? <laughs> to deny. Is it I, Lord? Surely it is not I, Lord. Or Rabbi. The gall of this Judas to even tease Jesus, taunt Jesus that way. You think Jesus didn't know? Who was going to betray him? You think Jesus Jesus didn't know from all eternity that he was going to choose somebody who later on was going to be his betrayer? You think Jesus didn't know? Of course he did. Right? Of course he did. Of course he knew what Judas was up to. Of course he knew all the preparations Judas had, had done going to the to the uh, authorities of the Jews and, you know, exchanging him from th for 30 pieces of silver. Of course, Jesus knew all that. But you know what Jesus was hoping against hope perhaps to, to happen? He was hoping that Judas will change his mind at the last minute. He was hoping that Judas will hopefully, eventually, use his freedom correctly. But Jesus being God, who created freedom, could not, could not be the first one to violate the freedom that he gave Judas to exercise. And sadly, Judas failed and pursued his plan why why because judas was already so hardened his conscience was so hardened and calloused by sin that not even such a strong reproach by jesus saying it would have been better if that man would not be born did any effect on him even the strongest of of reproaches coming from our Lord, had no effect on Judas. Why? Because Judas was already so hardened, calloused by sin, not just by the betrayal that he was about to do, or he already actually did to Jesus, but he was so calloused and hardened by all the small sins that he has been committing prior to this betrayal. You see, in another gospel passage, one of the evangelists pointed out, oh, you know, Judas, <laughs> he used to take from the purse that he was entrusted to keep. He was the, he was the money bag keeper. Okay? He was the one keeping all of the contributions from people that the apostles used in their own ministry, that, that they used to buy food and etc., and even to pay taxes to Caesar. Remember that? Well... No, sorry, no, not that one. Our Lord asked Peter to fish for that. But yeah, but anyway, Judas was the one carrying that bag. And in one gospel account, it was very concretely said there that Judas used to take for himself <laughs> what was in the bag. Maybe he bought some candy or maybe he bought some little things, you know, using the money he was not supposed to use for his person. So he was cheating he was lying. He was uh, uh, betraying Jesus and the rest of the apostles by allocating to himself what is not for himself and then pretending that he didn't know or pretending that, you know, well, and he even pretended to be goody-goody by saying, oh, you know that the, the perfume that uh, was it Martha or whoever used for Jesus' feet, that could have been sold and given to the poor. Wow. How noble Judas is, right? 
How noble that he was thinking of the poor. He was thinking of the other people. That's typical of liars. Typical of liars. They project an image of being goody-goody. Yet, they stab you at the back with their betrayal of other things that were more important, actually, were supposed to have been more of value, like doing their chores, like obeying their parents, like uh, doing their schoolwork. But yet, they, they appear goody-goody by pointing out what the faults of their other siblings are. What's the problem with other people? Not me. Other people have a problem. Not me. There's the typical psychology of liars, of betrayers, who have been so calloused with their own sins that they don't recognize their own sinfulness because sinning has been a habit for them. Sinning has become a habit for them. That even their confessions are insincere. Even their confessions are for show. There's no sincerity. There's no honesty. There's no integrity in them. And surprise! They commit a big sin. Oh, surprise! No, there's no surprise there. <laughs> Every time anybody commits a big sin, a mortal sin... It's not because he all of a sudden fell into it. No. The truth of the matter is, he has been sinning little by little, little by little, little by little, with small venial sins, small lies, small disobedience, small uh, infractions of the rules, not following the rules. and uh, It's a little thing. You will excuse it as a little thing. You'll justify it as, well, you know, I've been working so hard, so maybe I, I can be lazy for a while. Or maybe I can, uh, I can uh, allocate to myself a few luxuries, a few pleasantries, a few exemptions from the rule, because anyway, I've been doing this I've been doing that when we do those things we are damaging our conscience because we are convincing ourselves that those little venial sins those little faults those little infractions those Little giving in to pleasure here and there, or giving in to laziness here and there, or giving in to certain distractions here and there, are not going to be bad. They can't be too bad. They can't be too harmful. Well, guess what? That's what Judas is. That's what Judas did. A few pennies here from this bag just to buy me a little candy. Or maybe just to buy me a little sweet thing. Or maybe just to... Anyway, they're not going to notice because it's only a penny. Nobody's going to notice. The bag seems full still. You know, nobody's going to... It's not the point. The point is that... It's not that nobody will notice. The point is that, no, it's just a small thing. The point is that, no, it's just me anyway. Nobody's affected. Just me. No. Every sin you commit, every sin, is a betrayal of Jesus Christ. Now you tell me how little a betrayal is, really. Every sin is a betrayal of Jesus Christ. Every sin is a hammer that you used to pound the nails of Jesus harder and harder and harder into that cross that he has been crucified in. Every sin you commit, even if it were just a venial sin, is a sin big enough to crucify Jesus Christ again and again and again. Every sin you commit is a betrayal of the same magnitude of Judas's betrayal.
Because Jesus Christ did not die only for our mortal sins. No. He died for every sin. Mortal or venial. He died for all sins. I hope you, you understand that in that context. So there's no such thing as a small betrayal. There's no such thing as a small sin, really. The, the difference between venial sin and mortal sin is just a question of how dead your soul is. If you're completely dead or half dead or whatever percentage of death your state of the state of your soul is but it's still a death it's still a separation from god it just depends on the degree of separation it just depends on the degree of betrayal but it is nevertheless a betrayal of jesus christ Maybe to help you understand this. Every disobedience you commit is a betrayal of your own parents. Every little infraction you commit towards your parents is a betrayal of your parents. Because your parents have trusted you. Your parents have given you confidence that you were going to act like a like a like a dutiful son or daughter of your parents obeying what they tell you to do doing the things of the family to 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 uh, to complement the uh, the the chores and tasks that make the family uh, 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 function properly and all, all the other things from your schoolwork to anything else that your parents have entrusted to you and you don't do them you don't fulfill your duty you disobey or you do other things that are not in keeping with your status as children of your parents you're betraying your parents it's a betrayal and betrayal is always the most painful kind of wedge that you can drive in a relationship. Okay? A betrayal is always the most painful wedge you can drive. In a relationship to split up. A, a relationship between people. A betrayal is the ugliest thing you can do to people. Could you imagine doing this to God? Could you imagine doing this thing to God? And the problem is many times we even deny it to ourselves. We even deny it in front of God. We try to justify our infractions. We try to rationalize our sins. Like Judas, is it I, Rabbi? Is it I, Rabbi? When we commit sin... And we rationalize our sins. And we justify what we are doing. And we blame others for making us do what we did. Or causing us to do what we did. We're acting like Judas. Oh, is it really me? Am I really committing this sin? Am I really that bad? I don't think so. Some other people are worse than me. But no, let's be clear about it. Every sin is a betrayal of Jesus Christ. Every sin we commit, we're acting like Judas. Every sin we commit, we are pounding the nails on Jesus' hands and feet deeper and deeper into that cross. I want us to consider these thoughts this Holy Week. We're getting closer to Good Friday. I want you to examine your consciences, really, 
because this is what we are supposed to do this Holy Week. Examine your conscience really, really seriously and ask yourselves these very serious questions. Am I, have I fallen into the habit of committing small sins? Because small sins lead to big sins. So don't even be surprised. Don't even wait that you committed a mortal sin. Every mortal sin begins from small venial sins that you just dismissed, that you just justified, rationalized, and what have you, until it became a bad habit. And once it becomes a bad habit, then that, that makes it more difficult to avoid a big temptation, to avoid a big mortal sin. So before you get trapped in the quagmire of mortal sin, and especially repeated mortal sin, you better take care of the small venial sins that you fall or you have fallen into the habit of committing and stop dismissing them as insignificant or small and inconsequential because no, there's nothing inconsequential about sin. There is nothing insignificant about sin. Small sins become habit forming and when they become a habit, it makes us callous it makes our conscience callous that we no longer listen to the voice of truth. We no longer listen to the voice of good. We no longer listen to the voice of God. We ignore even our guardian angels whispers to us, don't do that. We ignore those things. Why? Because our, our conscience is callous. We, we're no longer sensitive. See, callousness leads to insensitivity. We are no longer sensitive about our actions for us it's just okay to be committing sin no big deal not gonna affect anything oh yes it will yes it will so be mindful be mindful of the little venial sins we have to abhor abhor even the smallest venial sin we have to hate sin with such a passion that we as Dominic Savio has said, would rather die than commit sin. Death rather than sin. And that applies not only to mortal sin, it applies even to venial sins. You should have a hatred, an abhorrence for venial sin. In as passionate a way as you may have with anything else that's despicable in your life. That is how much we have to hate being a sin so that it does not create in us a habit that will later on lead to our own callous conscience, deadened, deadened sensitivity to sin that it will be very easy to fall into mortal sin and to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the quagmire of evil because we did not take care of avoiding the smallest venial sin. Okay? So let's not put our guard down. Let us always be on the fight, you know, situation yellow, as we always say in our security lingo. Okay? Here, here in the house, we have those codes that we use. We always have to be on the alert on situation yellow when it comes to sin and temptation that we have to fight all the time and never allow the smallest venial sin to get the better of us. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Tomorrow is just as a reminder for everybody. Tomorrow is a big feast. Eh? Tomorrow is the feast of what? What is the feast tomorrow? Mia, what is that? Huh? What? The institution of the Holy Eucharist. There are two feasts we celebrate tomorrow. 
institution of the Holy Eucharist. And what goes together with that is? What is that? The institution of the priesthood. Right? Because without the priesthood, there's no Eucharist. Okay? So the two go together. And in that Last Supper, again, tomorrow we're going to talk about the Last Supper again. Okay? We have those two sacraments instituted by Jesus Christ together. In, and we're going to hear about that in tomorrow's gospel. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. So please, you know, I encourage you to live out Holy Week in a very contemplative way, to, uh, to play these scenes of the gospel in your heads these days. You know, it's a, it's a very good practice to, to uh, you know, like, like play it like a movie in your head, you know, in a memory, uh, in your memory, all of these scenes that are unfolding during this Holy Week uh, to commemorate our Lord's Passion. Okay? Uh, that's how I would recommend we, we, uh, we live out Holy Week and we examine our conscience. We examine our conscience in the light of all of these uh, events, really, really have a deep examination of conscience so that we can come out uh, on Easter Sunday as renewed as Jesus Christ was when he resurrected from the dead. Okay? And please, you know, do us a favor of liking, sharing these videos on uh, whatever social media you find it in. Okay? YouTube, Facebook, and the other social media uh, platforms where we are on. Uh, so that more and more people benefit from it. And you would have been a partner in this evangelization effort. See? That's how that works. Once you like and share and follow and subscribe, you are being part of this evangelization effort. So be yourselves an evangelizer with us. Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye, bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.